Okay, so what we have here, I took my pen and ink on Bristol drawing of you go from kill a kill and had it scanned at FedEx and they give you a PDF. It's a 9 by 12 drawing, but as you can see, there's all this excess. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the area just of the art, um, maybe a pixel or two wider. And then select, oh, I'm sorry, edit, hey, where is it? image, under image, I hit crop, so we get that, then edit, rotate, you can do this with the transform tool too, but rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, no, but then now it's, I meant to rotate the canvas, so Rotate canvas under image, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and let's make that full size. Now, this is actually lighter than the real artwork. Like the blacks, if you can see, have become sort of a, a gray. And since I'm going to be coloring it, that's going to matter even more, at least to me, because I want it to look like crisp inks. So I'm going to do a couple things. Uh, first, I'm going to duplicate this layer so that whatever happens, I have a, a safety of it. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the magic wand without continuous checked to select all the white and delete. Uh, I'm also going to make another layer down here. Fill that with white, so that's sort of my background paper, you see. Um, so now it's just that. But again, like I said, it's light. So two things I could do. I'm going to go image adjustments, brightness contrast, bring the brightness way down, the contrast way up. Oh, I'm on the wrong level. <laughs> okay, on the actual level, image adjustments, brightness contrast, brightness way down. See, now it's actually changing. Contrast up. Looks about right. Uh, sometimes I'll also duplicate the layer. Let's see. Let's see if it's too dark or not. So you see, I have two layers now, and I could make one disappear. Uh, I think I only need one, so I'm going to delete one. Yes. Then go back to full size. That's my safety. I'm going to take my safety and put it underneath the background. So now what I've done is created a layer with just the black lines and a layer with the paper, and I just created another one in between. Selected the pencil tool because I want to do color flats, and you can see. It's like a coloring book. It goes under the line. But I want to actually um, get the correct colors. So I'm going to open up the rough file I had, which I had pulled some colors for. Okay, so I have all my flats set. I mean, I'm sorry, my uh, line set. And then this is a rough I had before that I had just used some colors. Uh, and they seem about right. So I'm just going to go ahead and sample them and put just a piece of each one in the new drawing so I don't have to keep going back and forth I think I made those the same color yeah a little bit of Synchetsu's eye and I think that's it white. Whenever something's white, it, it's hard to leave it 100% white. I usually put a teeny bit of gray um, just to pop it from the background. Although sometimes you can get away with pure white, but in this case I'm not even going to try. So close that. Yes. Alright, so now we still have our flat layer here. The other thing, if I didn't have all this background stuff, I could kind of select her, um, but I'm going to have to paint it in since I do. Um, but I'm not going to do it on this layer, I'm going to make another one. Just pick a random color, let's say green. And this is going to be just to fill her in. I've seen people do it with the lasso tool. Um, and you can do that where what they'll do is, I guess, sort of go in like this and select the area they want. Oh, whatever, I'm getting sloppy. but And then boom, like that. And that's one way you could do it, I guess. I prefer the pencil tool because I find when I use the lasso, I have to go in and correct anyway. 
So while it's quicker, then I correct and it ends up being about the same, whereas the pencil takes a little longer, but it ends up being more accurate. Um, and so what I, what I like to do, well, actually, I, there's two ways I'll do it. Sometimes I'll separate out the separate colors and flat them, like the way I just made that sleeve one color. Sometimes I'll just do the, the entire figure as a green, and then I know that anything I color will be inside that. But since I can't select the figure because of all the background stuff, I actually might as well go ahead and do the appropriate colors. So I went ahead and selected that color for some Ketsu. Okay, see all this weird white stuff? Um, those are artifacts from the scan. What I could do, and this took me a while to figure out, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out, but I go into the layer, left click, and then there's blending options. In blending options, it says blend mode normal, multiply, I don't know why it's called multiply, but what that means is all the white becomes clear. So if you see, this is normal, but there's these little weird white edges, artifacts, uh, multiply. And actually, if I'd done this first, I probably didn't need to erase the white, but sometimes uh, if it's a clear enough scan, it works. So I click OK, go back in here, touch up these spots that I can now see I missed. Um, it does lighten it some t somewhat, so sometimes now I'll duplicate the layer. Yeah. And it kind of darkens it back up again. So I'm probably going to do that, and I'll merge these two layers. So now... They both have the multiply effect, so the white shows through, but it's not quite as faded. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some more flats, and then uh, I'll pick it back up. Okay, so I got all the dark blue of Siketsu flatted, and now I'm going to go ahead with some other colors. Okay, I've gone ahead and outlined all the flesh areas, but I wanted to address something um, with the way I flat. There's kind of two things you could do, and I kind of oscillate, vacillate, whatever, between the two. One is to tightly draw around the shape right here. Uh, fill that in, and the advantage is now the other pieces, like her suspenders here, which I forget if they're red or not, but let's say they're red. Well, that didn't quite work, but <laughs> assuming I've made it correctly, you can see how that fills in right there. It'll just fill in a gap, and I won't have to re-map um, out that shape later. Well, it's <laughs> this example is defeating me, but that's one way to go. Uh, the other thing to think about, though, is if you know you're going to do another color over it, like I'm going to do red right here, then I got sloppy with it because it doesn't matter. So I just quickly put that in because then, boom, I'm going to put red over it anyway. Um, but again, in theory, if you do it the other way, and sometimes you got to check like that. Uh, see, that's all not filled in. But if I was a little bit more careful about it when I was uh, filling in the flesh color, Let's, let's just do it like this for example's sake. So let's say I filled all that in. Then, once I got here, I could just go boom and be that much quicker. Um, I do that less. I tend more to just be a little sloppy and then fill it in afterwards. Uh, there's no right or wrong. Again, a lot of people use the lasso, so this whole thing might be quote unquote wrong. Just something to think about, different ways you could do it. Right now, um, I'm flatting what is essentially black. There's my phone. Uh, her hair, this little bra eye thing, a couple other accessories. Um, but if I use straight black, it doesn't work. I'll show you what I mean. This is 100% black. Let me turn that off. And watch what happens to all that detail. It just disappears. It looks like a big black blob of nothing. Nothing. You can't even see a hint of whatever. It looks like she's got tar on her head. So that's no good. So erase that. Now what I have done in here is pick the color that is, I'll show you, can you see that? That is very dark, but not black. So you can see right here is where I've chosen it. Uh, I picked the dark blue to start instead of red, uh, since she's got a red streak in her hair and there's the red of the handkerchief thing for uh, Senketsu. So then I just moved up and in a little bit. It's still almost completely black. And honestly, if this was going to be completely flat with no shading, I'd probably go a little bit lighter. But I know I'm going to put highlights and other things. So, but if you look, hopefully the camera can pick this up. You can still see, yeah, you can. You can see some detail in there still. So that's just, you almost never want to use 100% black in the coloring phase. That's something you do when you're inking, uh, if at all. Okay, so I'm almost done flatting her. Um, and I realized that even with my little rough, uh, I didn't have all the colors, and some of them might be a little weird. So I went ahead and pulled up this 
it looks like an official character sheet. It might be a fan drawing, but it looks correct as far as the colors. Um, and a couple things. Clearly, the blue I have for Sinketsu is way more blue and less gray than here. Uh, and while I don't feel the need to be beholden completely to this other version, uh, let me open this real quick. I'll put it as a reference layer in here. Uh, I don't feel the need to... What the heck? Hold on. Sorry, guys. Oh, I'm trying to copy it like it's from the internet, but it's not, so I actually need to open with. So if I pull this here, it should open up. Yes, okay. And then, when uh, you open an image on the internet, you can sometimes just copy it and paste it right into your uh, file, your Photoshop file or whatever. But since I actually had this saved on my desktop, uh, it didn't work that way. I had to open it and cut and paste. So anyway, uh, I don't want to be too beholden to these colors, but if I sample it and kind of take a look, and here's the other thing. Since I used a pencil to flat this, I could change it really easily. And that does look a lot more correct already. Um, what I'm probably going to do, well, you know what? I'm tempted to put a little bit of a more blue in it, but I'll do that with the highlights and the shadows, uh, because this picture is just flat with a little bit of what they call cell shading, which is just the shadows. Um, yeah. I also noticed that the black areas that I was talking about not making completely black on this are even more gray, so I'm going to try to do that. And even though a second ago I was just saying I don't want to be beholden to that, it clearly is looking at more accurate and correct, so I don't mind changing um, if it helps the overall picture. And again, I'm putting in highlights and shadows and stuff. Now the hair too, which is sort of black, is actually, the blacks on the uniform are more of a dark gray. The hair is more of a really dark blue, similar to the suit, but just darker. So let's see if I do that. Yeah, that does look more correct. Uh, and of course she has the red swoop in her hair. Sim yeah, I might I might end up swiping all these colors, just because... Why not? I'm, I'm going so far... Well, see, now that one I don't think looks as good. Uh, I'm going so far off with... Oh, that's because... Okay, never mind. I'm going so far off model with my style that maybe if I keep the colors a little bit more traditional, uh, that'll help people recognize what's going on and, and, and complain less about the inaccuracy, which I'm sure somebody will. Um, hmm, let me check her eye color, which is a light blue. Very graduated light blue at that. And then while I'm in here, I'm also going to select the orange for Senketsu's eye. Uh, close that back out. So then I'll go in here. I've already put white. Uh, that's not clear to the background. That's actually white on her eyes. And so I'll go in and... I'll do the graduation later, but I use this light blue as the flat base for her eye color. And what I like to do is then on an eye use white in the pupil, and a little shine there. Oh, that's too much of a pixel. I should have switched to brush, which I will do right now. I'm using pencil still. So if I do brush, it looks a little nicer, more organic. A little highlight makes her look alive. And then back to pencil. Pencil! Alright, now we're on pencil. And I have the orange for Senketsu's eye, but first I need to fill in the red. Which, I'm sorry, the red here. And then the orange. And did he have, I think he has red on the outside and then yellow. Let me check. Well, obviously that's the yellow. But yeah. Oh, I did that wrong. Red, yellow, orange, red. Red, yellow, orange, red. And there's reference for you. Red. Yellow. And orange and then red. So I'll just go, go over all that since I'm after you do it. 
And I also realized that the way I did her neckerchief sailor thing is all red when it should just be a red stripe. So, it's like they say writing is rewriting, drawing is redrawing, which is probably not true, but it seems to be for me. So, now we go orange. Wait, I see, I already forget. Is it red, yellow? Good, my memory. Red, yellow, orange, red. So reds start and end. Okay. The Alpha and the Omega. Red. So I'll just go ahead and make this all orange then. Hey man, it's not like weird colored cloth eyes or something I draw all the time and should be expected to remember. Alright, so there's that. But then I gotta fix the handkerchief thing. And what I could do here is select just the red so that if I spill over well, it'll get that red, but it'll kind of give me a little buffer protection. Uh, and I did, when I was inking and drawing it, I did put the little red stripe in there, so obviously I kind of knew what was going on. Uh, I just forgot when I was flatting. So there's always a lot of rechecking yourself. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and work on this a little bit more, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I have her flats uh, completely done now. Uh, and what I, what I did was with the red, I kind of made her scissor blade a darker like a blood red which would match the light fibers it's made of but also just to differentiate from the the red of her glove and her outfit which I made a brighter red and then the little red in the pupil I made the same color as the the blade um, for difference variation in tone and also just to connect to her to the weapon uh, oh one thing I forgot to do actually uh, is give her her little red streak in the hair which I will probably do bright as opposed to dark do that right now and I kind of drew her eyebrow through the hair which I don't normally do but uh, since it's lighter it might show through more and that's even though I'm not trying to match the style of the art in the show that is something you see a lot is the, the eyebrows and the eyes lines carrying through even the color and that is sort of a hard line uh, color butting up against each other right there, so I'm just going to switch to brush for a second and just kind of feather that a little bit so it looks a little less perfect, uh, even though, again, in an anime it probably is perfect. But One other thing, I, uh, when I was going through the flats, I noticed a couple little lines, nothing major, but you could see here the cloud, actually maybe you can't see, if you zoom way in, this cloud line is intersecting a little bit right there. That's something that doesn't need to be fixed, but since I'm digitally looking at it and I noticed it, I'm going to fix it. Uh, it looks like my battery's going to die, so I'm going to stop for now and come back later. Alright, so my battery died. Did some work. All the flats here are done, as you can see. I've actually finished all the shading on the main figure here. Um, and what I do with the shading, probably... These are all alpha videos. I know the, the, the perspective is weird and, it, you know, this whole thing, but you still might get something out of it, and I'm certainly going to get something out of watching it and, and going back and looking at it, but uh, I might do something in the future where I talk about shading more. There's a couple different shading techniques I use. This one is sort of a, a blend of, of cell shading, which is more of a hard edge um, with a lot, often using just black. Uh, at like a low opacity, so it's gray, uh, and more of a traditional sort of American style comic book kind of coloring. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to erase all that, and I'll just show you really quick, oops, I'll show you really quick what uh, I was doing. Let me zoom in real close on something here. I'll go close on her face. So, what I would do is make a new level, a uh, layer rather, above it. Select her color of her flesh. You know, I just noticed another weird little artifact on her lip, so I'll quick erase those little pieces. Okay. Uh, so I selected that color, and then I'll go a little bit darker. Maybe keep it up there so it's more orange. Then I'll select just the flesh on the layer below it. So again, now it won't get on anything else. It keeps it nice and clean. I'm going to put a heavy shadow. Uh, which again, I don't normally do this, but I'm sort of trying to go for a semi-animated look. So I'm going to put these hard edges in and then I'll soften them. Um, 
was kind of be sloppy, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna clean it up after the fact. But I feel like if I start with a hard edge, then it'll still retain a little bit of that starkness that you know animation style has, or at least this animation style has. So again, I'm imagining the light source there, kind of harsh. Then I'm going to go ahead and switch to my eraser, and I'll pick a brush. Uh, now, if I was doing a, my, the way I normally do it, I'd maybe put this at 50% opacity. I'm keeping it at 100, so it'll erase a fairly hard edge, but just soften it a little bit. But not be too, um, too much of a gradation. So I'm not being very patient with this because I just did it a second ago. So it's a little bit harder edge than I would normally go for. Um, and then the next thing I do is almost the exact same thing, but for highlights. So I pick that color, and it's going to be like almost white because she's pretty lightly colored already. Highlights are on its own layer. Oh, shadow. Once I make it, then I take that whole layer. Fifty percent takes the edge off. Um, so now I'm doing highlights, a separate layer. Same thing if the light's coming this way, I'm kind of just faking it in where I think it would hit the surfaces, the cheeks, the nose, you know, maybe a little spot on the chin, top of the collarbone areas, lip. Might even just kind of grab this whole plane of the face right here because then I'll erase part of it. I do that a lot too. I fill in more than I need and I draw by erasing. So yeah, I'll do that. And then I'll go ahead in with the erase. And I'll soften all this up, take all that out, and then kind of imagine the darkness is coming from the left. So I'm going to leave the lighter part on the right. See, that, that part doesn't make sense. It has to come off here because it's where the light's hitting. So. And soften here, and again, kind of need to get rid of that. Soften those, and make this 50%. It's not perfect. Actually, I might even go 25 on this. So it was a little bit. Uh, and then a uh, blush layer, which is just, erase those real quick. Um, pink for the nose. Uh, all the areas where like blood accumulates and you can see it uh, through the surface of the skin more readily, which is the nose, the cheeks, probably the eyes a little bit. Um, usually kind of on the neck, knuckles, things like that, chin. Probably, and this is like a ton, this is way more than you would want, but I'm just sort of slapping it on to erase some. And then we go in with the erase, same thing I do with the other stuff. Only even more so because I want this to be very light. top lip is always darker than the bottom. Well, I shouldn't say always. Typically, unless there's some reason or somebody has a strange nose or whatever, because the top lip hangs down and doesn't get as much light. The bottom lip sticks out more and catches the light on that edge. Okay, do a similar kind of thing with the cheeks and the eyes here. Uh, and then I take this all down 50%, and then I put the other layers back on. And actually, I think this highlight layer should be below the shadow layer, and then the blush, I'll put beneath all of them. Yeah, that highlight still looks pretty bright, doesn't it? I'm going to put the blush over the highlight. I'm going to take the highlight down to 40%. I'm not loving this, but you get the idea. Uh, then I'll take, for her lips, a slightly darker pink. Let me see if it was over there. And I'll switch to a brush. Oops. That's a nine. And then I'll go heavy on that top lip, like I was saying, to give it more depth and more realism. Uh, and then maybe put a line on the, the bottom of the bottom lip and then soften that a little bit. Probably even use more. Actually, what I'll do is I'll color in the whole bottom. This is what I was saying again, I, I draw by erasing a lot. Uh, and I'll put this at 50% opacity. And a little bit smaller, say 13 brush. There we go. Let's that line. 
That looks a little better. Um, but none of that is going to be used. So I'm just going to go ahead and put all that over here. And the reason I didn't just delete it is because now I'm thinking, oh, is it better than the version I did? Um, and in some ways it kind of is. This is the version I had done when I wasn't on camera. And this is the version, yeah. It's weird also looking at it so close up because it's you're not going to see that. It's not going to look like that. It's going to be closer to probably about this size. And like I said, I was trying to go a little more graphic with it, so this is sort of the effect I'm going for, although it's hard to see until I zoom it in for the camera. So that's that. Uh, and next I'm going to work on the background. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the background, since it's not... Uh, well, I mean, you can do this anytime. Uh, but it's sort of just a cacophony of destroyed buildings and garbage flying around and smoke and whatever. Um, rather than go in and flat everything first, um, I'm going to switch from the paint bucket tool to the gradient tool. And then I'm going to pick the burst gradient, which I don't know if you can see. Nah, it's a little bit up too high. But the burst uh, is sort of will have light here and then heavier there. Or one color here, other color here, as opposed to going in straight lines or horizontal lines. Um, I like using the burst one a lot because it, it's not as noticeable and, and also it, it will frame anything in the center nicely. However, I need to look at my color choices. There's all the standard ones, a few ones I made up. Looks like mostly the standard ones here. I'm actually going to load my untitled gradients. Let's see if I have anything better in here. Not much. Wait, it doesn't even look like it changed. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. I was going to make a new one anyway. So, um, with Ryuko, there's a lot of blue and red, and even her flesh is a form of red. So I want to... I'm thinking I want to do green and brown and that kind of stuff in the background. So, uh, let's see. I want the center to be sort of green. Like a really light, light green, though. Uh, with some yellow. This will hopefully, if I'm doing it right, it'll be kind of the center effect, which will be lighter uh, and help pop her out more. And then on the edges, what did I say I wanted to do? I guess like brown. We'll go sort of a green brown on here and then do the same thing there. Let's just see how that looks. So save that. Okay, and now the way the gradients work, you pull across and it, it goes out. So actually, let me, so if I make it small, that's what I've created. This this here is is the last color, just to the nth degree. And if you do really small, that's all you get. If you pull across bigger, you get bigger. You can pull all the way across, and you, you it's the same design. It's just a blown up version of it. Um, so what I, and also you could go other directions, you know, make it appear different ways, um, which matters more when you're going linearly. Now the one thing I noticed is I kind of messed up is, how do I do this again? I wanted the center to be the lightest. And I sort of accomplished that, but I have this darkness here. Wasn't my intention, but it still might work, so I'm going to go ahead and put Ryuko, oops, that's just the color, and there's the lines. Put Ryuko in the background back, and then I'm going to just sort of put it in and see what happens. It's not terribly bad. Let's see if I make it a little smaller. The thing I could do is make it smallish. I'm trying to center it. I'm doing a very bad job. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so then I might take this and maybe just move the whole thing down a bit. Uh, if I move it down, I'll have a blank spot, so I'm going to stretch it down. So put that there. Stretch that down. I don't even know if I want to do that. Yeah, no, I do. So I'm stretching it down so that the brown line hits where the, the ground sort of is. And, the, and I'm digging this. The only thing I don't like is the black around her head. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my eraser. 300. I'll put it at 25%. And just sort of erase that out and 
then I don't want it to look too different from the rest. Let me actually erase those guys. I keep saying erase, but it's yeah, muting. And then I'm gonna oops, let's get the rubber stamp tool. Clone stamp. And I'm gonna make it nice and big, let's say 300. I'm gonna sample this area and then fill it back in like that. That's a little weird, but I think oops, most of that'll be covered by her. Man, still a little bit in there. So I wanna get rid of that, so let me grab here. Maybe here. Just lighten it up a little bit. That's better. Still not loving it. Maybe I'll go back and erase again. There we go. And then use the stamp again. Oh, it's coming in really dark. Oh, I have the stamp at 50% opacity. That's why. Yeah, that's 100%. Okay. I'll put the stamp at 25, here, see how that looks, let kid and play, alright that works. So that gives like a really good base uh, for the mood of the background and kind of the, the general color palette without having to have done a lot of work. And like arguably I could just be like done, you know, if I wanted it to be a little less representational. And I'm tempted to, um, but I... I I feel like it's a little bit cheap to do that. Um, what I'll probably do is make this 75% and then put some, leave this on top and then fill in some gradients in the background. I think I'm not going to put any color in the background, but what I am going to do is add shading uh, and color. So kind of color it black and white and then let this fill in the gaps. So let me, once again, erase. Her. Oh, I can't erase that. Go. So I might as well leave her in. So now I'm going to make a new folder over here. I have all of her in one folder, all of her colors, I should say, in one folder. So I'm going to put all the background, except for this, into one folder. And I'm going to turn that off. And I'm just going to pick black. I'm going to go in real heavy to start. The angle looking here. Uh, with I'll start with a 300 brush and just put in all the heaviest. Again, I'm kind of thinking of the light source basically coming from here, but then there's probably a lot of refractions and maybe there's a fire somewhere and stuff, so I'm not going to get too precious with it. Um, like that. And then wherever there's smoke, I'm going to go lighter, uh, thinking that that stuff will not be as darkly shadowed because there's the smoke there which sort of obfuscates and obscures everything so like for example I'm putting a heavy shadow there but I'll probably erase some of it and this put a lot on and I'll take this and put it at 50 going with my eraser at 100 size 50%. Just sort of soften up these lines, make it look a little more organic. Um, the only place to get a hard shadow is maybe where she's standing. Everywhere else uh, is sort of not quite that harsh. And it's uneven ground, uneven buildings. This probably doesn't have as much shadow as it other side because it sides out of the light. And this stuff is a bit heavy. And that's not too bad. And then I'll go ahead and check it against this, which maybe with that in it, it could be 75%. No, no, it can't. So 50%. Let's erase that, erase that. And now I'm going to go ahead in and put some flat color. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go with like sort of a bluish gray just uh, for background colors. I'm not coloring it the color these buildings would actually be. Uh, I'm just sort of going for a neutral um, thing to help it pop out of the gray and the, the gradient I'm going to put over it. 
to show that it exists in this world and has weight and substance and stuff. Uh, and if you notice, I'm being pretty sloppy about this. I'm going to go in and clean it up. Uh, and I'm actually going to go ahead and stop for now, and then we'll come back when I've got that done. All right, so while I was doing these monocolor flats in the background, uh, I had these two buildings kind of right next to each other, so I did a lighter color on this one. The other thing, a lot of erasing. You can see all these pieces here. I just colored that all in and erased in detail that sometimes I didn't even draw. But when I was looking at the left side, I realized that this is a little too flat and I could use that light color there to bring this half of the building and make it look more in the light without you know worrying about highlights or stuff too specifically. So I'm just going to go in, <coughs> select that color, and like whole hog, just bang a bunch of flat color right there. Maybe put a little bit there. Just to, again, give it diversity. And that's, all, remember, this is all going to be covered up by something along those lines. So I don't want to go too crazy with it because it's you're not going to really see the color at all. But just to show you what I was doing. Hey, I whistled. I'm a whistler. All right, so I, I'm pretty much done with the back <laughs> with the background color stuff. Um, I ended up putting in a little bit more shading. I, I used different colors, not because again those are the colors of the objects, but just the add variety and shading. Um, I ended up putting when I put this over it, that would be 100 percent. So my initial thought was I'd go about 50 percent. That could work. But what I like better is I go 25 percent. I duplicated it, put one underneath at 75 percent. And then this is not blending quite as well as I'd like, so I took that down to 50. I'm going to keep working it. Maybe Actually, maybe make that 75. Yeah, maybe 75. So you can see it's sort of blending into that background motif a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to work on the, the clouds and stuff, uh, and then come back to it. All right, uh, I've messed around with the background. Uh, I put some colored smoke. If I erase everything else, you can see the color. Um, a lot of fiery color. I started with orange. I used to always do smoke, you know, the traditional white or gray way, and I, I did this thing where I had to emulate the style of the old 80s cartoon Robotech or, or Macross, if you're watching the original, and a lot of their fire was this sort of orange base. So I've been trying to incorporate that or other colors. Um, it's just more dynamic. Uh, it can be, can be a little unrealistic, but um, I also, as I did two different layers, so I have the layer underneath that's a little heavier, 75%, so you see it showing through on the bottom, but then on the top, uh, I have it only 50%, so that certain things here, it just sort of is slightly peeking through. Um, getting close to being done, I'm looking at the lines on these buildings in the back, though, and they're sticking out a little bit too much for my taste. I'm also not particularly happy with the inking on that one, especially on the left. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to go ahead and grab all the colors. There's I have two colors in those. And then on top of them, this is something I've done before, usually uh, in like a forest or, or something, or mountains, when there's stuff way in the background. I'll make another layer on top of it and then do another gradient. Um, let's see what happens if I use the same color gradient, but do it with the dark light dark bar. And so I get that. Now that's too much, but if I take that down to 50%, not too bad. Oh, actually, no, you know what I'm going to try? I just remembered what I was doing. That's how I would normally do it, but what I'm going to do is bring it up and put it over the line work and see how that looks. Wow, that really washes it out. Uh, also, it's butting up into her, but if I do 25, no, I think 50, 50, maybe 35. 35 is not so bad, and then I just have to erase the parts that are butting into her, which I can do by opening up her file and selecting all her flats, and then coming back up here, and that should more or less protect her. I think some of her black lines still have it, so I can go in and clean that up manually, which is a little bit annoying, but what are you going to do? Um, but I think I like the basic idea of what I got going on here, muting those background buildings, because they were just popping out too much. And I put some smoke and, and color stuff on them, but I, I really think it was the, the black lines. I, I probably have too much thickness, too much detail, 
which could have been handled in the inks better, uh, quote unquote, but it kind of didn't, I didn't notice it being as much of a problem until I went into the color and I started adding all the atmospheric uh, debris and lighting and everything else. Uh, I'm going to clean these lines up and then uh, I'm going to come back. So I went ahead and cleaned up the lines that, where she overlapped and I'm going to leave those backgrounds uh, with the transparency. I have it at 35%, the gradient, I mean. I could put it at 50, I think that's too much. Well, 75, it's, I don't, that's just a curiosity, I wonder what 100 looks like. That's weird. That might be good for us. you know what? Watch this, I'm gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna put that back at 35. And then I'm gonna take the duplicate I made. Select everything. Select inverse. Then I'm going to get a new gradient, new gradient color, I should say. Mm. Actually, not, you know, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'll just flip it. Okay. There we go. So it's not exactly the same. No. There. There. <laughs> there. There. Now. Now. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to take this and shrink it down. Oops. It's not shrinking it down. Shrink it down. Flip horizontal. And maybe I can put this underneath some other stuff and see if I could add a little bit of dimension. To the, the far, far background by letting this stuff sort of be silhouette. Yeah, I kind of like it. And it's just, it's just little designy nothing stuff. I'm going to have to erase that there. Actually, maybe not. I will just erase where it overlaps on the foreground because in the background it's adding a little bit more shadowy depth, which is fine. And so it just added a little bit there and there, but I, I kind of like that. Maybe, uh, you know, I could even do it again. Oops. Duplicate this layer now. And I'll put it at 50%. And maybe put... Like that. And I think I'll put one on the head. So the two main things I still need to do are the little pieces of debris that are flying in front of everything uh, and the lines, like kind of sky. I'm also thinking about possibly getting rid of the lines for the smoke, which I seem to do a lot. I ink it in and then I want to erase it. Um, especially when I put this on top, it really makes me feel like that smoke stands out so much. So uh, I've already made a duplicate layer of the inks. I think I'm going to go ahead and just see what happens if I erase all the smoke lines. This is just a test. And I have the color in there which should theoretically hold the uh, shape of the sort of plumes. Ken plume. Definitely gives it a more watercolor like feel which is good for animation but the problem is in the front here it's more incorporated into the artwork where if I start erasing it it's gonna erase other things as well and let's just see what happens maybe I could fake back in those details that I lose when I erase it What's interesting is I have the original inked art, which I don't always, um, but a lot of times I'll have it for sale or as a commission for somebody or whatever, and it won't necessarily match the color version, or if I make prints, I'll have the original art. And because of changes like this or other revisions, sometimes people want the original art for a print they like, and then are wonder, well, 
actually that's not true. I said they should wonder why it looks different, but oftentimes they don't even notice, you know, because I'm the one who's noticing all these stupid details. And I tend to think that that is the right move, what I just did. Um, it's making me look at the harshness of these colors, though, so I think I'm going to pause and, and move it a little bit more. Okay, so I have erased all the cloud lines. I've touched up where that messed up some other lines. I have colored in all these little pieces of paper and debris, uh, sort of off-white and put a tiny bit of shading on it. I also added a layer of sort of ember, uh, fiery stuff. It's only at 25%. If I put it at 100, you can see sort of like the campfire flyaways you see, but I figure with this much fire and debris, there'd be embers. Uh, and despite all that, she's like, smirky snark, I don't care, because I'm a badass. Um, and I'm thinking it's done. I'm going to walk away from it. Uh, it's like 99% done. I'm going to make a JPEG, look at it, and assuming I don't hate it, it'll it'll be done for now. Or done. So I didn't actually get to the JPEG yet, but I was just looking at these white sneakers that are actually off-white and have a little bit of shadow, and compared to everything else, especially now that I put all the shadow down here, it looks way too bright. So I just added that shadow there, uh, which I think helps a lot to make it look more grounded and part of uh, this universe I've just created. Or recreated since it's one of his characters. Well, uh, I checked out the JPEG. Looks okay. Sent it to my wife. Does it look done to you? Yeah. So it's done. Put the JPEG up right now.